Hi class, welcome to another video, another mapping video. In this demo, we are going to use GeoMap to plot county level COVID-19 cases. Before jumping into the mapping code, we're gonna talk about some of the things we did when we read the data in, because it's a great review of some of the wrangling tools we've been learning. So to summarize everything I'm about to talk to, talk about, we're going to use the map data function to get Minnesota County border information. We read in a file that gives the population of counties in Minnesota. The data are from this website. And we read in data from the New York Times giving current COVID-19 case counts. So let's talk through the details here. So um, I read in this map data, this county level map data. This is from a file that's already in R in the maps package. From that data, so if I just run this piece of code here, highlight it, command return, um, I get every single state. So I'm gonna filter that down to Minnesota. So filter to where the region, if you look, that's the variable there, region. So I'm gonna filter that region to Minnesota. And region is currently the state. So once I filter it down to Minnesota, I'm then gonna drop that region variable. And then the last thing I do is rename subregion to region, because when we do the mapping, it's going to look for a variable called region. So if I run this entire piece of code, which I've already done before I started this video, I get this county MN data and you can see there's long lat. Um, and the region here is the county. Um, also notice that uh, region is all lowercase. And uh, we'll see a little bit later if I filter this to Let's say there's I know one, there's one called St. Louis. Notice that does not have a period. So I'm going to want to match this to the other data I'm reading in. So we'll make sure to do those things. So one of the other uh, sets of data I'm going to read in is Minnesota County populations. And I have a link to the website where I initially got that if you want to peruse that. So when I initially read in the data, a couple weird things. So the county is, notice it has capital letters and all of them end in the word county. So I'm going to want to get rid of that word county. And then I'm going to want to make uh, these uh, lowercase and then I will want to get rid of that period in St. Louis so that it matches that other data set we're using. Okay, so I will use the separate function to get rid of county and I'm doing that. So I'm separating this county variable by taking out the last seven letters and that's what um, this sep thing. So it's actually going to separate by that county word. So that'll end up being dropped. Um, I put it into new variables called county and extra. So if we want to see what that looks like, let's run just that code. So you can see extra actually ends up with nothing in it. And then all I have to do is, so I'm going to drop that extra variable and then county I'm going to fix so that it's all lowercase and I get rid of the period. And drop the extra and then this mutate fixes, uh, first makes the string all lowercase and then we're going to remove uh, the period. So if I run that entire piece of code, which I have already done, it ends up looking like this, which is exactly what we want. And then the last uh, data we read in are the COVID cases and deaths from the New York Times. So initially when I read this in, let's see what that looks like. This one takes a, just a moment to run. Um, so when I initially read that in, it has county, state, 
FIPS, cases, deaths, and date. So these have uh, the cumulative cases for each date. So first I'm gonna filter down to Minnesota. And then I'm gonna group by county and FIPS. I kept FIPS just in case we, we need it later, but uh, these county and FIPS are actually at the same level. They, they have a one-to-one -one correspondence. So, and then I'm just gonna keep uh, the first, um, the top cases for each county and I'm gonna do that by date. So this is gonna keep the most recent date. So if I run this whole thing, and again, this one takes just a moment to run, but once it finishes, we'll see that there's a row for each county and it will have the most recent date um, of information, which has the most recent cumulative case counts and um, cumulative deaths. This is taking an extra long time right now. So let me keep talking through this code and we'll look at the results when it finishes. But after that, uh, just like we did in the previous set of data, we need to uh, make the names of the counties lowercase um and remove the period so we do exactly what we did in the previous set of code and then the last thing we did the last thing we do is actually join that population information to this code okay so here we can see that for each uh county we have the most recent cases and deaths um so I, this should be all uh september 18th which was yesterday I'm doing this on the 19th and probably the New York Times hasn't updated their data yet. I forget what time they do that. Okay, so then if we run this whole thing, we end up with this data set. So notice now the county is lowercase. And if we would search for St. Louis County, we can probably find it in here. It would no longer have a period in it, which is exactly what we want. And then also notice that the populations have been uh, joined here. Uh, there is one, one missing value, and that's because um, the New York Times has uh, sort of combined uh, the unknowns together. So these are cases that don't have a known county. And one thing I like to do is check my work to make sure I haven't made mistakes. So I do um, some anti-joins here just to make sure I didn't make any mistakes, which I did at first. Um, so here, the only ones that aren't um, in my Minnesota COVID county files are the unknowns, which I expect. Okay, so moving on to plotting the data. So first, we're going to plot cases by county. So we already have the Minnesota COVID county data. Inside my GIA map, I need to give it the map. Um, and this, I forget what I called it already. So this is our county Minnesota. This is our, what gives the, the borders. So county Minnesota. Then inside the aesthetic in the map ID, this is the variable from Minnesota COVID county that corresponds to that region variable in map. So um, I don't think I have county. Let's open this up real quick. So we want to find the variable in Minnesota COVID county that corresponds to the region variable in this mapping data set. So the variable that corresponds is called county. So here the map ID is county. Again, that corresponds to the region variable inside of our map data. So in that county MN data, it's called region. And then we're gonna fill this. Let's go back to this. We are going to fill this by cases, which again is the most recent cumulative cases. The other thing we need to do with this function, and I don't have a full understanding of why, is in order to make the map 
look nice. We need to expand our limits to essentially the entire area that um, the county data covers. So we'll put in county MN and longitude is on the X axis. Uh oh, did I do that right? Well, we'll find out soon. Oh good, I did it right. So I'm embarrassed to admit this, but I sometimes mess up my longitude and latitude. All right, so this is what our map looks like. Um, it looks decently nice. Um, but one thing you might notice is that this really just corresponds to the populations of the counties. I mean, not completely, but, but um, you know, Hennepin County has the most cases and Hennepin County is the most populous county. So instead, let's plot the number of cases per 10,000. So I already have the code in here um, from above that is going to remain the same except for the fill. So in this case, the fill is going to be uh, cases. Is that what they were called? Yes, cases. And I'm going to divide by population. And then I'm going to multiply by 10,000. And that'll give me cases per 10,000. So um, this looks um, better. We can actually see sort of where there's actually high numbers of cases um, relative to the population. Couple of things I don't like. First, this map looks sort of squished. Our background of this legend is now covering a lot of the map. Um, and I just wanna change the color scheme for fun and add some labels. So I think I've, uh, set all of these things. So let's first add labels. So I already have a start. So I'm going to change my title to um, Minnesota COVID-19 case counts per 10,000. And I'm going to actually get rid of the fill title because I think, or the fill label, as long as I have an appropriate title, I don't need a title there. And let's change the fill scale. So I'm going to do scale color, and I'm going to use my Veritas scale. And I'm going to change this to, uh, I forget the one I did last time. Let's try Inferno this time. Let's get rid of the legend background. And again, we do that inside of the theme options and it's, oops, legend background. And we don't want it. So that's where we use element blank. That tells it don't put in a background. And then um, I wanna play around with the way our figure looks. So to me, it looks sort of too squished down, uh, not tall enough. So I'm gonna do that by adding the figure width. Um, I'm gonna have that be three. And um, let's try an aspect of 0.9. And these things you just have to play with. And I cheated a little because I already played with these things. Um, okay, oh. <laughs> I made a mistake. So instead of doing scale fill Veritas, I had done scale color Veritas. That's why my color hasn't changed. This should be scale fill Veritas. So let's change that. It's a mistake I make all the time. Okay, so I think I like the way this is looking better. I'm sure I could make many more improvements, but for now I will just leave this as is. And I hope this tutorial was helpful in uh, learning how to do some mapping using GeoMap. That's all I have for now. Bye-bye.